Hi, I'm Patty with Studio Art 12 Stencils, and today we are going to paint a very gnarly background, and you're gonna have a lot of fun. It's really a neat technique. Join us right after this, and we're gonna have some really cool giveaways, so don't miss out. All right, guys, today we are going to do the coolest background. You're gonna love this. But before we get started, I wanna tell you that we're going to have three giveaways for our brushes. Um, we keep giving away brushes because they're amazing. So, and if you're out there watching us, make sure that you comment and let other people know how much you love these brushes because they are the best. Um, and it's not just because they're ours, they're just the best. So we're gonna give these away if you like, share, and comment. And then we have a grand prize, which is it's the most wonderful time of the year stencil, brand new this year, and it's so elegant and so beautiful. So um, I hope that you're the lucky winner. Okay, so I'm gonna put that away, put these off to the side. I got some show and tell for a second. Um, we are going to paint a love is patient, love is kind. You can't really see it on here, but this is my one of my boards. But I wanna show you what we're gonna do in the biggest format. I'm not gonna do it big because I can't do it on this list as big as this table, but I wanna show you what's in my house. So um, I, what I do in my house is I have a spot in my dining room. I have signs a little bit everywhere, but in my dining room, I have this ginormous space and the wall is a little bit empty and I've got plants everywhere because I love green plants. And what I've done is I've done my everyday sign and then I go ahead and I switch it out and I put my Christmas sign up and then I switch it out and I put my summer sign out and then I switch it up and I put my um, Easter sign out. So I'm gonna show you two of those signs right now. Um, so this is the one, y'all, that we're gonna do today. Hi. And so you can see this is huge, but not very many stencil companies offer this size stencil. So I'm gonna show you how you would work this out, okay? And then you could flip it over, you could paint the back, but then I switch it out at Christmas time to this one, and it's wonderful. So this makes me happy to be able to take one space and just make a space for a sign about the same size and then switch it out all year long. And they hook on the back behind my door in my laundry room, and they just hang there. My husband figured that out for me. And so they just can hang there and nest. They're super thin, so that doesn't even matter how big they are. All right, so I'm gonna switch these out of the way. So I'm gonna step off this platform for a hot second. Get those out of the way. And then I wanted to share a little bit more. So we've got you know, Christmas up on the wall and we have all these wonderful um, signs up there. But we have so many signs. We have so much stencil stuff to share and we can't do it all on video. So this one's got like a lovely modeled um, center and then it's a snowman sign. Then you go to really classic Faith and it's super elegant and very simple. Then you go to a little bit country and very simple as well, black and white, black and cream. Okay, a little bit with the classics. And then I love this one. This one is one of my favorites. This is snowflakes that fall, let's see if I can do it the right way, on our nose and eyelashes. And you hang these signs in tandem. And so I love that that's that separated kind of trend. So I just wanted to share a little bit more of what we're doing because I don't feel like we get to share it very often. Oh, and I have one more thing. Don't forget that stencils are fabulous for painting on pillows. So you can paint on pillows, you can paint on walls, you can paint on your floor, you can paint on signs. And we've got the stencils for all of that. All right, so let me get these out of the way and we'll get started. So today we're gonna do a kind of a freaky weird background. Um, we're gonna start with a plain white background and let me show you this one that I had started. So I've got it taped on opposite corners because that's what you should do. Otherwise things shift around. But do you see this background with this like chipped paint and all of that kind of stuff? So I'm gonna show you how to do the chippy paint on top of this white surface, and then I'm gonna to come to this and we're gonna show you how to finish it up. Okay, I'll get that out of the way. Um, but 
before we get that started, just so that I don't bump into everything, I wanna talk about how you paint a really big sign. What we've done is we've done things in like three pieces. So the big signs get done in three separate things that all piece together. They have etching lines on them. This one looks like it just overlaps, doesn't have an etch line. But um, when they need the etch lines, they're there. Anyway, so you just lay them out and do one piece at a time, and that's how you get the really big signs. They're not hard to do, you just have to make sure that you're, like, lay it out before you get started. Okay, so that's how I did my big Christmas sign and my big everyday sign. Okay. And you don't find those extra large stencils are really hard to find, and I knew I needed to do it as soon as I um, got it in my head that I wanted bigger signs. Okay, so we're going to take our colors. Our palette today is super neutral. Our lettering is going to be done in black, but we've got like a mushroom, a soft gray, white, a little bit of a warm. I really don't like everything super gray. I like a little bit of warm, so I always kind of pop in some warm, and then um, a darker gray. Okay, so those are the colors we're going to use, and we're going to kind of move between them all. So you might have to keep up. Okay, we're gonna use a fat palette knife. Unfortunately, it's not offset. I love my offset palette knife because I don't run my fingers into things. However, these don't come that way. So I'll show you how to use it. So I'm gonna shake and spit paints out. I'm gonna move this pillow before I spit paint right on top of it. Okay, and we're gonna put these paints out and get started. I'm gonna put them out kind of in a little bit of an order, i.e. not all over my palette. If I drag this palette knife through, I'll drag through the paint, so I don't wanna do that, okay? Believe it or not, you're gonna to wanna to do this with white. It's a really weird um, thing, but you're gonna, ooh, uh, that looks like it wants to run away. I think I'll add the yellow last, and I think I'll leave the gray as well. So we're gonna work between these three colors first. So, to get started, you ready? Oh, so I'm supposed to say things besides what I'm saying. Um, like, share, and comment. Go to our YouTube page and our YouTube channel and make sure that you subscribe and then ring the bell. Um, the bell notifies you when we have new content out. And that's super important because if you're busy like I am, then you're gonna to wanna to know when stuff comes out so that you can go back to it. And it also will stay in some sort of notification thing on YouTube, I'm not quite sure how that works. All right, here we go. So I'm going to pick up my palette. I'm gonna just lay it flat in there and just get some gunky stuff on there. And then I'm going to lay it completely flat. My handle is almost flat on the piece. And I'm going to just drag it until I don't have any more stuff. If you drag it incorrectly, and I'm gonna do this with the colors so that you can see it, if I smear it, it's gonna be solid, and we don't want solid. So um, that is incorrect, and what I'll do is I'll just layer over the top of that to fix it. So um, that brings me to one of the things we like to say around here is paint it until it's pretty. Um, if, you, um, if you make a mistake, like this is a mistake, I can simply go back into another color right next to it, and I can kind of, almost like putting like makeup on your face where you just cover the blemishes just a little bit. So don't be afraid to paint because you can paint it until it's pretty and now look at that just faded into the background. You don't even know it's there, right? So don't be afraid of paint because it's your best eraser. Well, besides your fingers and your thumbs. And you can see that I've been erasing quite a bit with my fingers and thumbs. All right, so I'm gonna go into the white and I'm just gonna kind of just streak. As soon as I feel like I'm losing it, I'm gonna go load some more. And I can mix between the two colors, or three colors. Now, in my stencil, which is over here, super empty at the top. So I have some white space up there. So what I can do is I can make it a little busier here, but in where this little wording is, if I make it super busy there, then it's gonna be really difficult to read. So we wanna keep our busyness at the edges and not so much in the middle, but we still need to have texture or it'll look strange. So, we're gonna keep going. So I'm gonna pick up gray, gonna pick up white. Gonna just go ahead and layer. Keeping it out of the edges. 
And I just kind of squint at it and look at it. The white is really important because that'll give you texture without texture or without color. So the white can go where the busy is with a little bit of the gray. And then you don't want like all gray and all white. You want to mix it up. So, um, so see what I did just there? Um, this happens to everybody that does this technique. You're just going to drag. I guess if I did it every day, it probably wouldn't happen. But like I pick this up once a month. Um, so that's just kind of solid. So I'll just come over it with the white and then it's fixed. But that happens all the time. You can also do this with like a wax technique and you could do this plus wax and it would look super amazingly chippy. So that's another alternative. So tell me if you've tried any of these crazy backgrounds that we've been doing and which one has been your favorite. We, we've done um, some things for Halloween and Christmas and different things. Um, let me know what you like. And everybody say hi to Noelle. She's there answering your questions live. That's what these lives are all about, is getting you answers to what you need to know. All right, so I've got more white. You saw how much white I put out? Like, I have probably a three-inch circle of it, and I've used it all up. Okay, so there's a, a yucky smudge right here. So I'm going to need to patch that guy, and I'm making it worse. Let me. So you can also just, like, palette knife that stuff off. Okay. And then go right back over the top of it and just fix it. It's all about kind of not panicking, right? Okay, so now I'm going to get some more of our grays. And that, that draggy, whatever this is called, is the magic. It just sits on top of each other and it doesn't quite blend with the surface. It is incredible. So, yeah. And now I squint and I look. And what I know that you don't know is right now, I know that I'm going to um, be sanding through this. I'm going to do some waxing through this. I might spatter this. Um, the distressing really makes it, I'm going to show you the distressing in just a hot minute. But um, So I know that this isn't the finished place, but I'm, I'm getting to a place where I think it's a about there. Let me get out that warm color. Shake your paints if you know you haven't used them in a while. And there's a really cool trick that you can take your paints and put them upside down when you put them away this time. And then the next time you can put them away upside right. And that helps you um, actually keep your paints mixed. So the paint will settle to this side and then the next time you use it, it settles to that side. Kind of a neat thing if you don't like to shake your paints. So I'm going to go into a little bit of that cream. It really almost got away from me um, on the board that I'm going to show you next. So I'm going to back off a little bit. Okay, that's our grand prize drawing that I'm trying to draw in here. So make sure you like, share, and comment. The um, liking and sharing, so the reason that everybody that does these videos does this is because algorithms and Facebook won't show videos to people. So if you don't have a lot of people making action on it. So that's why even if you don't want to share it, like it for us um, because that shows Facebook that, that you're, it's important to you. So just do the amount of commitment you can commit. All right, so got about enough of the cream. And then I'll go back over it with a little bit of the white just to mellow it out. So I've got a hint of warm not too much. On the one that was hanging in my house um, that I just showed you, there's a little bit of rust in the background and um, I decided to just go with a little bit more neutral palette today. All right, so do I like it? Am I there? Back up, you squint. All right, so now this takes um, a while to on my sample board that I painted for this I think it took a couple hours so and I had a fan blowing on it so if you're in the middle of winter and you're not in a very dry climate or whatever you might need like overnight and you could stand there with a blow dryer that'd be super irritating so don't do that all right so I'm gonna get rid of this one bring up this one okay I'm gonna get a new palette so 
once you get to the stage where you're dry and you look at it like you get new eyes the next day, you're fresh and you're ready to like go at it and whatever, um, you might get back to it and you'll be like, ugh. Don't worry, because you can add paint right over the top of it. Like you're, you're not done painting until you're done painting, so you don't have to ever worry about that. I'm gonna take my tape off of this and take it away. I wanted to get it like halfway there because there's a lot of things to stencil on here. And I wanna show you how to stencil, but I feel like this is more of a, how do I do this background and how do I finish it and take it across the finish line? So this is where I took it to. So on this side, I've got it heavily sanded. Um, I've sanded through um, things. You guys are gonna get to see me sweat in just a hot minute. Um, so I've got it gouged out. This side is the way that my piece was um, earlier. Like that's how that side looked. So I'm gonna get here. I've got a sanding block. Um, sanding blocks are imperative. You can use um, folded up sandpaper and you can make it happen. You can wrap it around a piece of wood. This grabs it and keeps it and it's wonderful. Um, they're at hardware stores. This is a 3M one. They make generic ones, um, Home Depot, Lowe's, all those things. Um, and this is 60 grit sandpaper and it's you know rougher than a cat's tongue, right? So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get back and we're gonna gouge, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dig into that surface. I'm gonna absolutely be peeling off stuff um, don't do this on your fine um, cream color carpet that's in your living room. Trust me. Okay, you want to do this where it doesn't matter. Out in the garage. And then I turn my sanding block when I'm going through like that's a piece of thick paint. And I'll turn it and gouge it and then I wipe. And then I might turn my sanding block just to get a better place. The one thing that you want to pay attention to, I'm trying to make this look a little bit more like um, plankish in a way. I'm not really trying to go plank, but if my lines arched, it would be ugly. So I don't want ugly. So I want to keep my lines flowing. So we just dig at it. I like my edges to be more sanded than not. I'm going to go in there and just really dig at it. Okay. And I like to have um, bits like this coming in where you're at the edge and then some is coming in. It's almost like that antiquing that we do, but I'm doing it with a sanding disc. So this is almost 50% sanding and 50% painting. Okay. And we dig. If you hold your tongue just right, it comes off easier. Okay. Through the heavy paint is harder. The fresher your paint, the easier this is. So don't put this away until next Christmas or your paint will be harder than all snot and then you're gonna be sad and you're gonna be writing me emails. Okay, so we sand it through. The sanding is diffusing the paint. So like see here where we've got this really strong line and like over here, if I sand where that is, I can bring in something new, plus I can diffuse. But so what if, let's make a mistake. I'm getting the black from the edge of my sanding pad. Whoopsie, there's a mistake, right? We wanted one of those. So I can sand it away. But now see, I've dug a big old hole. Okay, what do I do about that? So. I'm gonna go back into the white, I think. Maybe a little bit of gray and assess it. And a foam brush. And then we're just going to tickle that down. Never panic. Always go for your paint. And so say you do have like um, a big cream blob here that you don't like, um, and just tickle that away. So no worries. Okay, easy peasy. All right, now we are going to, that one spot's a little bit wet, but I think we're okay. Brush off all of our junk. I'm 
line it back up. Remember to like, share, and comment, and then tell us where you're from. Tell us what you like about painting. Tell us, does it make you relax? Is it good for your soul? Are you selling stuff? Online marketplaces, guys, if you do um, craft shows, you should try doing like some of this like Facebook marketing and stuff like that. That's super easy. And um, you don't have to go places and set up and stuff like that. That might be a neat alternative. I used to sell at craft shows. I am super aware of that. All right, gonna make sure I am lined up. Now I did this in gray and then when I pulled out the one that my husband brought from my house, I was like, oh, it's black. So I'm gonna finish the side in the gray. I'm gonna show it to you and then I'm going to, um, and then I'm gonna redo one side in the black so that you can see the difference. So when we're stenciling so that we don't bleed under, this is what we wanna do. Um, these are big stencils. Um, if you recall from other videos, if you haven't seen any of our other videos, go to YouTube channel and you'll be able to see them all lined up. We even have like um, the lists of different kinds of videos. So go there and see us and then you can find whatever you want. We are, we are very knowledgeable about stencils and what you can play around and do with them. And so we're gonna show you all the tricks. And so on the YouTube channel, we're gonna have all the tricks. So like, share, and comment, and that will get you entered in our drawing. So the brushes are fabulous. To not bleed under, that's the key. Um, a lot of people use the flat stenciling brushes, or some people even just use like that um, foam brush and they just go at it with the paint. What happens is that this is not sealed under, and you're gonna just shove paint. You're just gonna be pushing paint right under there. So in order not to do that, we have to do a couple of controlling things. Number one, we use a brush that's domed across. So it isn't flat. If it was flat, it would splay under kind of like a broom. Um, and we don't want that. So this one's domed, so it doesn't do that. It's also super tight. So um, it controls things. And then we're gonna go into our paint with just a little on the tip. We're not gonna scoop it up and pick it up. And we'll wipe it off and then we'll swirl it off, okay? And it wastes a lot of paint. It does seem kind of stupid. It even seems stupid to me, even though I know that why it works. But it does, I wish I could figure out how not to waste all that paint. But that's how you do it. So we swirl it off until we have barely anything. And then when we first put our brush down, we are going to um, just swirl ever so gently. Okay, so gently, gently. And then as I run out of paint, I can push a little heavier and if you do this, especially in a big, watch this, I will show you. I will, show, I will always show you how to make the mistake so that you don't do the mistake. So if I stippled, notice that's making a big bullseye right there and it's just not okay because it's like solid. And this is like a dreamy, old fashioned, chipped sign and that really strong paint isn't gonna be pretty. And now we could sand it. So after we're done, I could go back and sand that even. Or I could not stipple at all, which I think is the answer. And then if I needed to erase it, I could go in with a brush and you'd never wanna use wet brushes, but if I wanna erase, I could just kind of erase that out. Ooh, that's sticking. Okay, and I could erase that out. However, it's not covering, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna erase it with paint. So when I get done, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna erase it. But if we swirl instead of, um, if we swirl instead of stipple, then we're not gonna end up with all these like little bubbles of paint everywhere. Okay, so I'm gonna skip that spot and let it dry for a second since I had water. And actually I wanna look and make sure I didn't leak water under, no, I'm good. Peaking is necessary. Okay, so we go ahead and we just swirl. So soft at first, then heavier, and then you can repeat. What's neat about swirling is you can go back and repeat it right away. Um, if you stipple, you have to wait for things to dry. If you stipple, you generally bleed under and that's just not okay. So I'll go into this area now. It's, if it's cold, it's wet. So I'll go over this area and now here's the interesting thing about stippling. So I've got a hole there, right? And if I wanna fill that hole, 
if I swirl, it won't make it better. But I can go right in that hole and I can softly stipple and that'll fill a hole. And then I'll do a thing with the sanding disc after I'm done. But that is how you fill a hole. Like sometimes if you're on wet paint in your background and you dig at it a little bit, then you get that like dig a hole thing. Then you can stipple to fill the hole, let it completely dry, swirl over the top and you've got the whole thing fixed. Okay, so that's one coat. Now I'll go back through, give myself a second. Well, actually, we're gonna go back through with black. I have to go back through with gray because now I've started with gray and if I go black only here and gray under here, it's gonna look weird. So now we're in the little words. Little words can be better stippled, um, honestly. These are thicker little words, so they're gonna be okay to swirl. But if you have a really skinny detailed stencil, sometimes the only thing you can do is stipple. Okay, so see how fast that goes? If I was stippling and pouncing, um, I'd be here for a long time. And my arm gets really tired. Of course, I just worked it out sanding, so I don't think I need to do my workout tonight, right? All right, so we're getting ready for Christmas. You see our wall back here. Let us know what you like about the wall. Let us know what is your favorite traditions and your favorite um, Christmas time things. Like we're curious about you guys and please share. I don't know if you've been noticing, but we have been sharing um, your creations. I think that that is super cool because like, so we spend like literally, you know, I work 40 hours a week. I try not to work overtime. I do sneak in weekend time, but I work 40 hours and our team works 40 hours and we've got a lot of hours and then we're doing it for you. And so when we make something, we're like excited, like, oh my gosh, this is gonna be so pretty in Mary's house, you know, that kind of thing. So make sure that you share because that just shows us that we're on the right track. Make sure you put comments in there and you let us know what you wanna see, you know, because that's what we're here for, is we're here for you guys. So we want to, to help you have the most beautiful Christmas, to have the best Thanksgiving holiday table, to to um, celebrate Easter the best way, um, make your front porch look better than anybody's with all of our porch decor. And if you haven't checked it out, this is gonna sound really funny. If you haven't checked it out, we have got some pretty funny bathroom signs. You should check those out. They're fun. Okay, I'm gonna go into the black now. So you're liking, sharing, and commenting because we're gonna finish this up real quick. Um, we've got a little bit more to go, but not much. I love how fast these signs go because it means that um, I've painted in the past where, you know, every project took like 20 hours, you know, and these are like literally 30 minute and one hour projects. I mean, it might take you a little longer than it takes me, but how cool that you can get that done that quick. Like it's fabulous. And it's kind of cheap because you can use a found board. You can paint over two years ago thing and you can redo it. You can get a tray that you have. You can go to the Goodwill, whatever. Paint on found things. Like I love that it doesn't have to cost a lot of money. You can reuse the stencils over and over again. They are reusable as long as you don't damage them and bend them, they're reusable. So I'm not doing the black super strong. I just want it to be like a hint. And it might be interesting to peek on this and see what it looks like just with the black over the top. Ooh, do you see me wiggle right there? I saw me wiggle right there. So this O is big and the bridge is little. So when you get to something like this, you want to hold it down as you come to it to keep it from wiggling. So if the, the things that are in the middle, the E's and the O's and the A's, those are super hard to bridge elegantly. And we want it to be really elegant and we don't want it to look ugly. So we try to do that balance between like just enough and not too much. Okay, so we'll finish the black. And we'll peek and see if it's cool that the love is black. I think um, in our world today and yesterday and all through time, I think love is where it's at, right? So we need to remind ourselves this. I love this on my dining room table, over my dining room table. 
Okay, so I'm gonna peek, take a look. I'm gonna hold it down. I think that looks cool. I can dig that. Okay, I'm calling that. So the love is what where it's at. The love is the focus. And the, the rest of the words, while they're, everybody's, I'm gonna throw this on the floor. Um, er, it, they're just as important, but I love that this is your main message. So sometimes you can use like a bolder color. It's not a different color really, it's just a darker gray. And um, that makes it, it changes the mood. All right, so I'm gonna feel it to see if I'm dry and I'm gonna hit the blow dryer for one second. So, ah, I'm trapped. I'll, I'll try to hit the blow dryer. I've got wet painted boards and signs and a chair and I've got all kinds of things down there. All right, on your brushes, um, the way that you care for them is you're going to keep them in water when you're finished. Do not leave them laying out on your table or that paint will harden. Paint is plastic. Um, so if you let them sit here, then the plastic hardens and you will have a ruined brush and then you'll be sad. And if you're painting things with lots of colors, I'm trying to think, like here we've got um, red and brown and white and green, all those things. If you're doing something like that, you're gonna need like 10 brushes, so make sure that you have a good amount, you can't use them wet, so order them in a couple sets. We have sales, so make sure you sign up for our newsletters on our website in studior12.com, and that's the letter R, and that's what I'm looking for. Okay, so my sanding disc has paint on it, and that's generally okay. If this had teal on it, sometimes the teal will be left behind, so you wanna make sure that whatever's on here is okay by you for your project. All right, so in order to make the black, go with what we've got going on. I'm going to sand through it. And I'm gonna go some places heavy. And I don't patch my bridges. I think that our bridges are done really well. Um, I don't patch them. If they bother you, you can patch them. You can just use an artist brush. Okay, so now there's a couple things we can do. We can go into our um, special dark varnish or wax. I can go natural, which is this one, that's min wax. And there's special dark. And I want a glove. So let me show you the two things that will happen if you use either one of them. So this, um, this chipped area on the edge of the board is going to pick up the wax really heavy. This is an MDF board. It would happen on birch as well. Um, if you had an old aged piece of wood, I don't think it would do the same thing. Um, ha! How do I get into it? Just like that. Okay, we keep these little sponges inside our wax and they're available on our website, okay? As well as all of the tools and things that are on here. Um, we don't carry the min wax, we don't carry the sanding blocks. Um, there's a couple things we don't carry, um, but like in the world of like online shopping and stuff these days, it's easy to get stuff. Okay, so you just rub that into your, your brush, not really, and you can just warm up the edges. So I could just really like antique my edges with my wax, this is a, um, um, well, it has a lot of small print on the back, which means it's not good for you to breathe. So do this according to the directions on the back. Um, and I definitely use a glove because it lasts on your hand like all day long. All right, so I could just do it at the edges. And that really does kind of frame in the piece. Or I can go heavier. and make it more distressed looking, which I kind of like. Or go on this side. If I'm not, now we've already taken so much work to do this like distressed look. I feel like not using the dark wax might be a mistake, but if your house is lighter and you're just not digging the dark, there's a natural and it's crumbly. Get rid of some of that. 
I don't think we've paid attention to sealing the lid very tight. Probably because then we can't get into it. So the natural goes on there and it is exactly going to do the color that you have. Um, we really like the wax on this, um, on these projects. I think that a lot of varnishes have um, a lot of gloss to them. And I think that distracts from the wood and the rustic and the things like that. Um, there's a place for it, but I think maybe not on this kind of art. So I'm going to go back into my dark wax and I'm going to finish this up. And just really dig into that. Once you've waxed it and you've let, and you've let it cure, um, then you are good to hang this and you can refresh the wax when you need to. Notice my streaks right there. Notice how they picked up and they really turned dark. So if I didn't like that, what I could do is I could sand back over this after my wax is dry and then I could brush a little bit of the white paint on it to mask it and then I can come back with the wax again and finish it up. So even at this stage, you're not, you're not toast yet. You can still fix things. But I do love the distressed, dark feel of it. Yeah, so see how we did a layer. So we had our white. I'm going to recap for a second, right? So we had our white, then we put our layers on, and then we did a little bit more with our layers, and then we sanded, and then we did the wax on top. So we didn't start with like, here's a base coat, here's my stencil, and I'm done. We just added a few layers, and it really makes a rich, deep, look. So I hope that you remember to like, share, and comment, and then I hope that you join us again the next time. Thank you.